The IPv2 from Pioneer for You or Greenleaf Technologies. Let's have a look. So today we are going to be having a look at the IPv2 from Pioneer for You. This is from a company called Greenleaf Technologies out of China. So finally, we have something that's coming out of China that isn't a clone. Thank God things are changing. Definitely this company is changing the market from China uh, with original ideas coming out of China. Now this is a 50 watt box mod, um, the wattage ranges on this are 7 watts all the way up to 50 watts in increments of uh, 0 0.1. Um, the lowest ohm resistance you can do on this device is a 0 0.2 all the way up to a 3 ohm build. Um, this battery or this uh, box mod has a reverse battery protection, uses a single 18650 battery. Um, I do believe it has a overheat um, safety feature in, uh, built in with the SX330 chip. i um, just going to check some notes here really quick. Reverse battery protection 510, uh, vented battery casing, and in my up close um, I do um, suggest that this box might be zinc. I did find out that this box is actually uh, straight aluminum. It does have some weight to it. It's it's very, very comfortable to hold this device. Um, not as comfortable as some other devices I have coming up for review, but um, this one for sure has uh, taken the cake as far as daily devices go for me. Um, I've been using it, uh, I think now for about three weeks, um, off and on at work. Um, with just a uh, dripper and uh, my fogger actually I've been using the fogger on this and it's been working very well um, <clears throat> you'll see in the up and close that uh, when we go to that um, the finish on the outside of this case um, actually is a little cheap and uh, is starting to wear away a little bit um, I do believe I think I read that the next batch coming out for the IPv2 they've actually improved or thickened the coating on the case itself so um, every time they get input on this device they're changing something um, I, I also read that uh, the next changes that they're making is um, on the inside of this device when you see in the up and close that it is just um, a very clean looking one piece plastic battery tray um, you know slash you know it, it's a complete cover on the inside and it's glued into this aluminum box now from what I've seen from a post from Greenleaf Technologies is that they've added four screws on the inside of the case to stabilize um, the inside internals um, from coming out or coming loose because they're just simply uh, as far as I know glued in there and also they've changed um, the screws on the outside of the case uh, they're going to be a hex style screw instead of the tiny tiny little Phillips Phillips head screw involved with that um, I think that is pretty much all the improvements that I can remember that they are making in that post, but uh, very good on them for uh, accepting the information given from uh, the normal regular users of this device, what they don't like, and then you know they're making improvements and you know they're coming out with a 100 watt version of this box mod and I think if if they listen to the improvements that need to be made from the end user of the, these products the 100 watt box mod 
is going to be pretty epic. I do believe that uh, Pioneer for You or Greenleaf Technologies is going to have a lot of success with this uh, box mod. Now, as far as price goes, um, you know it ranges. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll dip into the the wholesaler price of something like this. Now, a wholesaler buying a bunch of these at one time um, is paying around somewhere around fifty to sixty-five dollars a unit. Um, now the end user at a retailer after a retailer has brought this in paid for the shipping all the extra fees involved with that if you are shopping around for one of these uh, IPv2s um, do not expect to pay any more than $120 if you're asked to pay more than $120 for this device uh, you need to shop somewhere else for sure um, I really do hate it when retailers um, do an extreme markup on their products. Um, they must think that you know their customers aren't informed on what is out there uh, and the price ranges. Um, I do understand that there are you know some people that are impulse impulse buyers and you know they walk into a brick and mortar and trust that the brick and mortar is going to do them. Uh, right uh, as far as price goes um, with items but uh, besides that the uh, IPv2 has definitely been a very good device to me I have had almost zero problems with this device um, as far as um, you know problems with the chip um, you know my pros and cons on this device so far have uh, been uh, the cons at least have been very minimal um, but yeah let's go and have an up close and uh, personal look with this device all right guys here we go we have our IPv2 from Pioneer for you or Greenleaf Technologies this is our 50 watt variable wattage device. Now this packaging here is how I received this from um, straight from Pioneer for You or Greenleaf Technologies, um, minus the plastic heat shrink around this device. So this is how you should receive it at your local retailer unless they have gone ahead and done something different, uh, custom work on the actual box itself. But you can see here that this is the silver version of the Pioneer for you or the IPv2. Um, you can see the back of the packaging. We've got a side box here. This contains your USB cable. Also with uh, some other goodies in there as well. We've just got a slip ring here for everything to be held together. Now. Here is our nice case for the IPv2. Um, very similar to what an iPhone or what an iPhone used to come in. I remember that uh, I've gotten iPods before and everything like that that come in these style uh, jewel boxes. These are uh, nice boxes, nice presentation. You can see that we have a uh, barcode there for the device. Obviously 18 plus to use this device. Can see their website pioneer4u.com. Now let's get into this device. So, cover comes off. We have an instruction pamphlet, a quality control certificate. Flip it open, we have our device. Inside a nice foam kind of cradle. Very nice. Uh, other than that, there's nothing else inside this box. So we can close that up, get that out of the way. So we've got our device, instruction manual, quality control certificate, and our USB cable box. Uh, we have our standard micro USB cable. The other item that is inside of this side box for this device is a small screwdriver. 
and also screws for this device now this is what I really like and I think that companies should be starting to do um, with all their devices that they sell now Pioneer for you or Greenleaf Technologies with the IPv2 has gone ahead and supplied all the extra screws you would ever need um, we've got two extra sets of the screws for the back panel on the top and bottom and we have an extra firing pin um, I do believe this is either uh, uh, copper or brass plated I'm not too sure about that but uh, it's the same as what is in this device currently and you can see right there are Phillips head style um, adjusting uh, connection pin up down to adjust it screw it into the device or out of the device alright guys let's get into this case of this device here so I'm just using a custom well not a custom but just a Phillips head screwdriver that I have in a um, RC uh, RC car uh, toolkit that I bought really nice kit so we've got our two Phillips head screws there you can see now that I do have a bit of a gap or the case is kind of convex um, which is great because once it is all tightened down it does uh, have a nice uh, fit and feel to it so we go ahead open up our back case or back cover you can see that there is a little bit of wiggle room for the battery on that um, just kind of cut into the back case we do have tabs to make sure that you're lining this up correctly uh, we got a couple little drops of something there I'm not too sure that's the screw hole there but uh, there was a bit of melted plastic on the back of that so inside we have our another quality control sticker um, on that as well we have our 18650 battery our IMR now you can see how clean this device is on the inside it's very very clean compared to um, other devices especially the Canna clones the Hanna clones were notorious for the amount of hot glue that were in those devices you can see I'm not too sure if this is a ser serial number on the inside or what exactly that is it probably could be now you can see on the battery connections if I remove the battery which is actually quite easy to do um, compared to something like the Sigali 50 watt where uh, you literally need a tool to remove the battery itself so on the inside we have our connections here I'm not too sure what these are made of whether it be uh, brass or copper or such and such but you can see here this appears to be a melted plastic but it really isn't um, if anybody uh, knows what um, plasti dip is it's like a rubberized kind of paint or like a uh, um, it's like a liquid rubber that uh, uh, stiffens out after it's dry um, that is what that is it's not melted plastic uh, it seems to be that the uh, connections were slid in place and then uh, a drop of that uh, liquid rubber was applied to the top part uh, locking the connections in I do believe that these are some kind of brass plated or something along those lines but you can see the only wire that you're really seeing is that positive connection to the uh, battery terminal there and, uh, and that's about it I mean uh, I don't really see the uh, benefit to having the venting here uh, I'm not too sure if there's any kind of electronics down there maybe here yes where the board sits um, but yeah that's pretty much it I mean it's a really simple kind of uh, device on the inside I mean I'm not going to delve into uh, ripping this all apart and out um, I don't want to risk damaging this device at the moment considering I uh, had purchased it with my own money 
Um, but yeah, guys, there you go. Um, there is the inside of the IPV version 2. Very simple, very affordable device. Uh, yeah. All right, so there you guys go. Um, did a little bit of the up close and personal look at it. So you can, as you saw in the up close, I had maybe thought that this case was zinc um, or some kind of uh, alternative metal or uh, something like that. It's because the weight of this device, it doesn't feel like it should be, like it's really heavy and dense, like, uh, or sorry no excuse me it's the opposite it's a little it's light feeling it it looks and feels like it should be plastic but it's actually aluminum so you saw in the up close that i had my plume veil clone on there now i have my uh fogger version 4.1 which i did a review on if you uh want to see how um to do a build on this device and the wicking involved with that go ahead check out that video I'll throw the link in the description for that but uh, yeah it's working great right now I have it set only at 10 watts for my fogger at the moment right now um, the build that I have in the fogger is according to the device a 1.2 no it's not a 1.2 I do believe it is a one point or it's a point nine point nine build I'll come back after I find my resistance meter okay so I found my resistance meter and this is what the resistance of my fogger is at the moment it is a 0 0.77 build um, I think before I started tweaking with it after I rewicked it it was at a 0 0.8 so it has fallen a bit so activate the device vaping at 10 watts now I'm not too sure exactly what the chip is doing there the screen is kind of bright but um, hopefully you guys can make this out so we're vaping at 10 watts. It's it's saying that it's detecting the fogger at a 2.2 ohm build, and it changes every time. Four ohms right there. All right, guys. So I decided to stop the video um, at that point. Um, we're gonna do a little test here to see not to necessarily see what the device is doing and kind of you know. Um, uh, I probably won't be able to tell you what the device is doing but what I have here in front of me is I have five different builds all at five different resistances and I'm gonna throw them on the device and um, as far as I know uh, at the bottom of the screen there when I showed you with the fogger how the uh, resistance was jumping up and down um, the experience that I've had with uh, um, other chipsets has been that it tells you the resistance of your build and now that was jumping around quite a bit all the way up to 3 ohms and the, the fogger build itself was only a 0 0.77 build. So below 1 ohm there should have been no reason why it was jumping all the way up to 3 ohms. So let's get on with this test we have right now so we have our um i'll just go i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna go below the two ohm uh minimum right away just just for just for the f of it um just for just to see what happens so we activate our device Should try and get it on screen for you guys so you can see it's reading it at a 0 0.6 ohm resistance right now. I fire it again, 0 0.9, fire it again, wait for the screen to dim. And the screen is now dim, 1.2 ohm. Fire it again. There we go, it finally got it right at 0 0.2 ohms. It is just under 0 0.2 ohms. The build on that was 0 0.17.
So that's another thing I'm uh, another con to this product that I'm not liking is the ultra bright screen 0 0.3. Okay, so you can see that the resistance is jumping around a little bit and I mean as far as I know that when the device is trying to tell what resistance is on the device it's determining what voltage to use and you can see how the voltage was jumping around at the same time too so this is a 0 0.24 uh, ohm resistance build this is just over the minimum that this device can go below so it was firing that 0 0.17 I do not suggest that you go below that so 15 watts uh, the device is saying 0 0.4 ohms that's not correct 0 0.6 ohms that's not correct again 0 0.7 0 0.4 now it's at 1.2 0 0.4 1 1.3 1.6 2.4 wow it is all over the map so we'll go from our 2.4 to our 0 0.56 build so this is our 0 0.56 build now it's reading it at 0 0.9 1 6 1 1 one zero, one point two, three point four at seven point two volts. The RDA just about blew up. Now it's reading it at four ohms, which the device claims that it cannot go above that. One point four, one point one, one point three. So I don't know what's going on. The threads on all of these RDAs are clean. The threads in the device are clean. The contact pins are clean. I made sure of this before um, I hit the record button. So our next build up, we've got a 2.13 ohm build. So this is way above the minimum, right below the maximum, and we'll see what we get this one so still at 15 well 15.1 watts it's reading it at 3 ohms 2.7 3.1 again above the maximum that this device claims it can handle 3.2 now now it's at 4.5 ohms resistance. I do not know what is happening. If anybody can explain what is happening here, that would be great. Uh, now it's saying it's at 5.1 ohms resistance, which is way above what this device states it can handle. Now what are we at? Focus. I know it's at something crazy right now. Three point seven, four point one. Like, I don't know, maybe if someone has an idea of what's going on with that, please comment below. Back to the fogger at the 0 0.77 ohm resistance build. Now this is a freshly charged battery that is in here also. Um, you can see that by the battery indicator that it is a freshly charged uh, battery. So it's not a one point anything ohm build. It's below one ohm resistance, this build. 
so I'm not too sure exactly what this chip is doing um, but like I said up in the in the uh, down in the up and close that I've been having really bad results with RDAs um, with the voltage spikes and I have a feeling it's because of the the ohms resistance that this device is detecting off of my devices I mean I just showed you guys five different builds five different RDAs um, you know two were Patriots one was a Plumeville and one was a Addy a Tobe Addy so you know I'm not too sure what's going on with that uh, it is all the same uh, wire canthal um, except for the plume veil the plume veil right now is a G plat build um, so I don't know I can't explain what's going on maybe somebody can that would uh, be great if you could shoot that down in the comments uh, if you have a uh, suspicion of what's happening with that but uh, Other than that, I really haven't been disappointed with this device. I, I actually suggest that, you know, if you're looking for something along the lines of this device, go and purchase one. Try it out for yourself. I do believe that uh, Pioneer for You is going to have a lot of success, success with this device. And uh, it's definitely going to uh, end up killing out the, uh, the Hannahs and the Cannas. But, uh, you know, that's definitely personal preference on the device that you have I mean uh, just because something new comes out doesn't mean you have to buy it uh, what you have will do so anyways guys uh, that was my uh, review on the IPv2 um, I'm planning on getting the IPv uh, 100 watt version of this mod when it is released um, upcoming reviews that we have in the works um, right now I do have this one right here I am in the process of testing out this device right here this is the ZNA clone from uh, a mod or Woto or Wotafo um, they were very generous and sent me that device uh, free of charge along with a, a couple other devices that uh, quite possibly could be in the works for reviews also we have a couple of the Sigali 100 watt box mods coming when they are released. The release date uh, from what I've heard from Sigali is that uh, they're planning on releasing them uh, early September. So I went ahead and I got two of those devices on order, pre-order, and we're going to be giving away one of those devices for sure. And uh, I also had another device that I was going to uh, review, but um, like the 100 watt box mod, I had purchased two of them, brought them in for testing, uh, for a review, and both of them failed. Uh, they are um, DNA 30 box mods. Um, I'm not going to name any names. I'm in the process of having those items replaced or, uh, you know, my money refunded or. Or whatever I'd like to see a couple fun functional devices so I'm not going to name the company or uh, device that uh, that happened to but uh, so far I'm very disappointed in that and I hope I can uh, I hope I can deal with the uh, person who had sold those to me and get this issue resolved quickly but yeah guys okay so that was the IPv2 review uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it Enjoy the rest of your week, the rest of your weekend, whatever it may be, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.